You are watching Niche Sports, a sports media outlet that's proudly sponsored by HezHez.co.uk, a fast-growing boxing equipment brand that supply custom designs and bespoke equipment across the United Kingdom. This is the Full Force MMA podcast from Knee Sports, proudly sponsored by Hez Hez Boxing Equipment. And we're joined by 2Ks, one of his lads, two absolute animals, both fight out of the same gen, same gym, next gen in Liverpool. Luke Riley and Ad- Adam Cullen, thanks for joining us, fellas. Yes, lads. Nice one for having us. Yeah, it's all good, man. Uh, I like to go back to the beginning with my guests from the start. So both of you tell me individually your backgrounds. How did you both get into MMA from the start, lads? Go on, Colin. You go, lad. Um, I got into MMA because my brother bought the UFC game when I was about 11. Didn't even have a clue what it was. I remember playing it and be like, wow, I'm at this. And then about fucking a couple of months into playing it, I realised it was a real thing. And then... From there, I just started training MMA. From like, um, I had to sneak out. We used to sell sweets in school because my mum wouldn't let me um pay for um training MMA. She says that sell sweets in school, use that to pay for the train and pay for um training sessions on the sly. And that's basically how I started. Did that at fifteen, and then trained fucking ever since in MMA. Just done MMA, and then here I am today. Fucking best looking fight one page warriors. <laughs> What about you, Riley? Um, with me, lad, it was just fucking... There was no one really in my family or anyone that led me on to it sort of thing. It was just me mum and dad got me into the um, Thai... Well, kickboxing it was at first, lad. And then went on to Thai boxing. Then to amateur boxing. And then now to the... Where I am today, lad. MMA, next gen. So it was just a progression through sports, I guess. There wasn't really no... When I was a kid, like, it's someone, a reason why you got into it, it was just fucking, I got into it. Something, something to do. Yeah, yeah, just, that was just fuck all to do, so I got into fighting. No, you love it. When you was growing up, like, like you said, you were playing the game and all that, Adam, who was your sort of inspirations and all that growing up? What, an MMA inspiration? Yeah, 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 like, who were the fighters that you looked to and thought, I want to be that guy? Rampage Jackson. He was one of the first ones. I fucking proper wanted to be Rampage Jack, didn't he? <laughs> and then, uh, who else? Uh, yeah, probably Ramp- Rampage is probably the first person. I thought, oh, that'd be sick. Just the way he used to howl and all that, and then just knock mm-hmm. off. But then at the same time, he'd, uh, he'd just like barely even train. He just fucking fight. I just thought that was fucking sick. But so, yeah, Rampage had to be the one for me. Book. Um. <laughs> Inspirations growing up, lad. There was obviously because I didn't get into them, like I'm sort of new to them. MMA. It was obviously I looked up to, but even when I was doing so Thai boxing, me first sport, I I was big into um, to boxing me. So I don't know. I used to like Floyd Mayweather as a kid, lad, but I'm not really into him no more. <laughs> uh, trying to think, the old school fighters, lad, Roberto Zidane, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. Uh, Roy Jones, all the old school boxers, lads, to be honest. So how come you didn't go down the boxing route then? I did. I was at... I did, at you? Thai boxing, yeah. I'd, I'd done amateur boxing for five years. So that's what I mean. I was doing Thai boxing. Don't get me wrong, I've, I absolutely love Thai boxing. And there's Thai boxers who I looked up to as well, actually. There was, like, obviously, Sanchai, um, a fighter called Singh Dam, who we used to like. But he used to be big into boxing, lads, so... That's why I was into like the old school fighters and then some of the new school ones as well, but mostly old school. Yeah. Nathan, this is your first time on a podcast. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Excited to be here. Um, yeah. yeah. And with Luke, how, how, what was the switch from boxing to MMA? What was it that sort of encouraged you to pursue that rather than go, go fully down the boxing route? Um. Do you know what? Yeah, it was. Um, I don't really know. It was like a, just a fucking sort of a like a light bulb moment in my head, sort of thing. It just I don't popped into my head, and I just said to me mum one day, "Fuck this, I'm going to MMA," and just told me boxing coach lad. It was a bit of a mad one. 
it was like just literally happened overnight it came into my head and I just fucking for some reason it was like someone was speaking to me they were going to MMA and then I just would have had the tie back the tie back round and then the boxing I guess it was just myself saying fuck it put them together learn shit on the ground and then see where you can go so yeah and and Adam, obviously, you, you were straight to MMA by, by the sound of things. What was the, those first sort of training, saving up money, and then going to training? What were those first days like in the gym? They, they were sick, to be fair. I used to literally just go with Nathan. Me and Nathan started together, and we'd literally go to some um, old um, MMA coach's house. He had a shed in the back garden, and it would just be us two, like 15, and a load of fellas, and we'd literally just have straighteners. Four amps MMA glove, no shinies, not knowing what the fuck we were doing, and we just had <laughs> boss. It was sick. We used to come out, nose bleeding, I had braces at the time. My lips were just cooked to fuck because I didn't even have a gun shield. That was boss. I used to go home to my mum and she'd be like, what the fuck's happened to you? I I'm like, Why's your mouth all cut to bits? And I'd just be going, I've just been playing footy, haven't I? You know, just get, getting into it. Relax, but I fucking loved it. Just having it every day. It was sick. Yeah, I bet the, bet the coach is a bit j- different in the gym now, isn't it? But it's like, oh, full on between you all now, like that, is it? Yeah, no one's got the four of them MMA gloves on anyway now. <laughs> so, uh, uh, who, who is the fighting out of that gym now? Because Paul Smith's there at the minute, and he's training for this bout. No. Is he not? No. He's only done a couple of sessions. Yeah. Has he? Because he's come, gone down with Shem, yeah. 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 I think he's training uh, let's to be honest. Is it? But, uh, busy lads, yeah. Loads of people on our gym at the minute. Obviously, load all the lads on Cage Warriors. And um, obviously, pa- Paddy and Molly in the UFC. Shem's on Octagon. Got loads of people moving over to our gym recently. Do you know where I'm joining from other teams? It's the, the match absolutely rammed at the minute with serious high level talent. I feel like yeah. the gym is getting better and better. It sounds like it's only making good noise. So uh, let's just switch it up a little bit then. So who's got the worst taste in music in the in the in the gym? <laughs> Jake McHugh would have to be up there, wouldn't he? Isn't he into all like Slipknot and that? Who? Jake McHugh. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like uh, Slipknot and that, doesn't he? All that right, banging it's stuff. Hard, it's hard to tell because obviously not everyone's at the playlist. On. No. There used to be a fighter called. Uh, Fucking Joel Danny Cave. Oh, lad. From he was um, from Australia. Yeah, like a mullet. He was Sandy's boss, Joel, but his playlist was fucking dreadful, lad. <laughs> He's from Australia. Australia. I don't even know what it was. It was what was it? It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so probably yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that one. He's got the worst dress sense. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a toss up that, and it's got to be between Camilleri and um, Liam Gittins. Oh, yeah, dodgy, yeah. Dodgy big outs yeah. between them two. Dodgy yeah, socks. Them too. <laughs> uh, so we mean we were just before we started recording. Me and Colin was just saying about how many of you are on the September card. Who's your, who's your opponent again, Luke? Um, Alexander Luth. He's called. Yeah. Have you have you have you, have you, seen, have you been able to see much of him? Yeah, I've seen a few of his fights. Like he's a um, he's a good all round fighter. He's a MMA fighter, to to put it shortly, you know mm. what I mean. He's good. He's good everywhere. He's not special, no word, but he's he's a good, well-rounded fighter. He's not he's not bad anywhere at all. So he's gonna come in and he's gonna he's gonna fucking try and mix it up with me. You know what I mean? He's gonna try a few take downs, try and stand up with me. So that's what I'm expecting. Yeah, and Cullen, you know your opponent, don't you? But you can't can't tell anybody yet. Down to Cage what his press release and all that. Um, but you're looking to bounce back. That was a massive shot last time out. Has has, has that affected you that in any way, or are you just gone full beast mode when you've gone back in the gym? No, it's not affected me in the slightest. Like I know what mistakes I made in the lead up mm. stuff. I ruined that fight for myself. I lost that fight close even in the cage with what I've done. Um, but it is what it is fighting, do you know what I mean? I, I, it's been four years since I lost a, a fight last time. Like, you can't win them all. And I feel like shit like that just reminds you that you're human, do you know what I mean? And you're in there and you're having a fight with someone who's coming to fuck you up. 
And it was just a wake up call you need sometimes. And I know I'm just going to be on another level when I go in there and I'm going to show that. The end of September, I'm going to put on an absolute fucking clinic and it's going to be heavy. <laughs> Were there any lessons you learned from that defeat, Adam, just from that you've put into your training now for, for this upcoming fight? Yeah, it's just a lot, a lot of it was down to me weight cut. I cut far too much weight. I, um, I, I was watching a lot of stuff, looking at what like the likes of Islam, how much they're cutting, Charles and all that, and I just learned to fucking stay in my own lane, not worry about what everyone else is doing, do me. And I wasn't doing that. I was I was worrying about what was going on, how much weight to cut, blah, blah, blah. I need to be bigger. I'm going to be in the UFC soon. I need to be bigger and all that shit. And then it was just a fucking reminder. It's just like, it doesn't fucking matter what anyone else is doing. Just do you. And um, I paid the ultimate price in the end. But skill-wise, I know how good I am. I am fucking still the best fight on Cage Warriors. And I'll say that with my chest. And at the end of the day, I'm going to go and show it in September. And I can't wait. Yeah, I'm mad excited for it as well. Yeah. Is that the biggest thing where it's just like, it's all about Adam Cullen now, it's all about you are going on your path and not trying to copy or follow anyone else, it's just knowing that it's your path going into this yeah. fight. Yeah, it's just the, um, just the, the putting, I think I've put too much pressure on myself as well, like, to do everything, and I think like, I've the pressure of the first round finishes, I had six first round finishes on the phones, um, all stuff like that going in. And like, I just feel like now I'm so much more composed and the pressure's off and just like, I know how good I am and I show it every day in the gym. And I've been showing it in the cage, but now it's the time to have a more complete version of myself. And yeah, I'm just, I just know I'm ready. Luke, when I interviewed you after your scrap with, uh, it was with Aldo's training partner, were it? The yeah. last one. Yeah. 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 So th- this this kid now, do you, do you think it's a better or worse opponent? And do you think these are the right type of opponents to get you to that UFC spot? Um, yeah, I'd say he's better on on paper. Anyway, he's a uh, he's beat a few better names than the last kid. Um, obviously the the hype of being undefeated makes it makes it a bigger fight. So yeah, on paper he probably is better. I don't know. We'll see. And when it comes to in the cage if he's better fighting wise but uh, yeah it's the it's the fight I need fucking two hungry prospects going at it fucking putting the record on the line but oh, fucking gonna bang it out lad so yeah it's the fight I like lad yeah he's basically gonna be full of your lot in Manchester but <clears throat> would you just want a show in Liverpool would you just want to both have a show in Liverpool yeah, one million. That'd be sick, wouldn't it? That'd yeah. Be cool show. I mean, we'd fill the fucking cards, wouldn't we? Just put our gym. Wouldn't need to just bring in fucking bodies for us. They'll smash. Wouldn't need anyone else. Yeah. See that? I know. I know. We talk about the UFC a lot, but like, obviously, Shem and everyone's in Octagon. Have, has has there been any, 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 any thought on other promotions like Bellator and stuff like that? No. If any, if that's... any offers come along, no. No. Fuck that shit. I'm only focused on the UFC. It's got to be, you know, when I seen a number the other day that it was 105 fighters from the cage when it's the UFC. That's outrageous, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. Mm-hmm. Oban Elliott the other night. Did you, watch, did you watch him last night? I haven't watched it, no. Oh. I watched him, yeah. He's, he's a fucking tough kid, isn't he? It's one thing yeah. you, one, no one can argue that he's not tough because he is. He's got a fucking... He wanted to win. He willed himself to the win in that fight, didn't he? Just yeah. by... Just by fucking pure toughness and fair play, lad. After that performance, he deserves to be in because that kid was throwing fucking bombs. Well, yeah, yeah. He ate them, didn't he? He ate yeah. them. And come back and fucking. I mean, he definitely won the fight, I think. One, didn't one of the judges score a draw? I, that was I think so. Yeah. I think it was a split, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely. Um, he, he won the fight, and I think fair play, yeah. He looked fucking. He's tough. One tough fucking kid. Did you just watch the main card at the weekend? Oh, Muller. Yeah, yeah. It was a crazy finish, that. Yeah. And uh, I know we've just been... I just want to go back to just saying I know about fighting in Liverpool, but all the cards, you know, like San Diego and Rome and all that from Cage Warriors, was none of you just want to jump on one of them? Get troubled yeah, about a bit. Definitely. I'd happily do a fucking fight in America or 
of holiday to Rome, lad. But uh, obviously, the ones in Manchester don't need to fuck in to sell tickets. Yeah, it's because you, you fill the place out, right? Yeah. So it's going to be unlikely we're going to fight there, to be honest. But I'd like to do it, lad, yeah. What is that dynamic like on like a fight where multiple of you are there? Is, what is that sort of like backstage heading into fights? What is it like on a on a card where a lot of you are from the same gym? I think it's quite chilled, you know. I think me, man and Luke, me and Luke have got very much the same approach. I feel like when we're warming up, we're both like very calm, I'd say. Like neither yeah. of us like super hyped up or anything. I have like I, I know I do a light warm up. I, I never really see you do loads of warm up to be yeah. honest. And oh, I feel I like with me and you're on the card with Sam because we, we, we barely even speak to each other, do we? We're just both yeah. just fucking chilled in the zone, watch other people fight. And like, yeah, and I, I mean, me and you have been on so many cars together recently. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say with, with the other lads, but I know I know when we're having the changes, like, it feels like we could just be sat on the mat in the gym. Like, it makes us yeah. both just fucking relaxed and, and ready for it. And uh, yeah. so it, it's a bit of a weird dynamic to be fair. It's probably not what people would expect. We'd probably think we'd all be in there, like, yes, fucking let's go, fucking slapping each other and fucking high five and all that shit. Yeah. Like, not even that. not, is it, lad? You yeah. fucking probably fall asleep in there. Yeah. <laughs> and Luke, going into it to your fight. Right before the fight. Yeah. And going into your fight, obviously you mentioned they're both undefeated. Does that add something to the fight, knowing that you're both in it on a similar trajectory in your careers and similar mindset yeah of course for the that one's for the fans in it i couldn't give two fucks if he's undefeated lad but obviously it's what the the, uh, the fans love a good fucking who's always gonna go don't he so uh yeah it's just builds the just builds height for the fight lad so yeah it's the, um, the right fight of course it does so i know you're both premature in your career but what's been your best moment so far Um, 15 second knockout in the first show back in Manny. Um, what was that? April last year. That was definitely my highlight. It's fucking boss. To bury some kid that was fucking wild. But well, I was giving him shit. And he was giving me shit back. It was fucking boss. <laughs> 15 seconds. It was, it was sick. Um, for me, lad. I don't know why. I like, I like me looking back, probably thinking. I, I like me debut. Because it was sort of... Uh, it was late notice, lad. Then obviously, I had a fight booked in for the. I think it was Almighty. It was either Almighty or FCC. I can't remember what show it was. Oh. And uh, I was planning to fight on that, and then just got kicked, got a, off someone someone to come in for Cage Warriors. So I said, "Yeah, fuck it." First pro fight, and then just took off from there. So I don't know. Probably that or the. Uh, People like the Eglin fight, don't we? The Eglin fight was a good one. Yeah, the Parker uh, fight was good as well. The what one? The Parker fight. Yeah, there's a few good ones already, and I've only had a few fights. It's mad. There's a fucking, there's a few bangers in there, lad. But uh, yeah, the Parker fight. Looking back, it's like a sort of an icon, iconic one already. But yeah, uh, yeah, I guess that. So what do the yellow gloves mean to you, boys, then? Because you've both been in the cage warriors since the beginning, haven't you, from yeah. both of your careers? No fighting bums from us, lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like when you've been on cage warriors from the start of your pro career, everyone respects you because you, you know you're legit. You're not fighting any of these cans fucking coming in. Mm. We're just getting 50 quid or whatever because they can't be arsed going on a building site. <laughs> like, so people are there to win. So uh, I feel like you, people know you're legit, do you know what I mean? See your record and see your fucking hell. All fights on Cage Warriors. You're, you're fucking the real deal, aren't you? Yeah, too right. Anything else to add, Nathan? It's the path to be on, and if you want to go to the USC. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is that on being on Cage Warriors? Is, like, is, it, is a Cage Warriors 6 and 0 or 7 and 0 different from like a fair other? Six and oh, you can get building up just knowing you're fighting that legit competition, yeah. Every single time you go out there, 100%. How many people just see it were like five and oh, six and oh, come to cage warriors and people are like, oh, fucking hell, blah blah. And they fight, you know, someone who's like wouldn't even get a look in, 
it was being around the block. Say, like, do you know what I mean? There's, there's plenty of people we all know them with being on Cage Warriors and the fucking one win, two losses, win, loss, all that shit. And they fight, you know, one of these kids is coming, everyone's going, oh, his boss is being fighting on blah, blah, she always six and out, and they get pasted. Mm. It, it's fucking different. Of course it is. Well, we'll look forward to plenty more of the quality matchmaking, and we'll definitely look forward to the 29th. It's been a pleasure tonight, boys. Thanks for joining us. Nice one, lads. Nice one, boys. Cheers, boys. You are watching Niche Sports, a sports media outlet that's proudly sponsored by hezhez.co.uk, a fast-growing boxing equipment brand that supply custom designs and bespoke equipment across the United Kingdom.